and I wasn't really sure I believed you, but it, but it was significantly cooler out there, so a big thank you. See, that's mostly in part, though, just because of it's cloudy. Hopefully, the better air, just the, the actual, actual cool air, actual cool air, kind of feels like fall. That's that's hopefully going to get here a little bit later on. We will look the weekend, forward to that. So, yeah. Hey, uh, something we've all been looking forward to for a long time, and it finally happened last night. A new face of late night TV debuted as the first episode for The Late Show with Stephen Colbert premiered right here on CBS. It almost feels wrong to say Stephen Colbert instead of David Letterman Doesn't right it? there. Yeah. But it was a great show. The show was easily the number one talk show of the night. Ratings skyrocketed. People tuned in. They wanted to see how he did. And not surprisingly, Colbert got things going with his trademark sarcasm and witty commentary, which a lot of us have come to know and love. Trump is swearing off of Oreos, okay? He claims, he claims that Mexico is taking our economy and they're ripping it in two. He's the only candidate brave enough to deport the Keebler elves. <laughs> Colbert's first two guests were George Clooney and Republican presidential candidate Jeb Bush, which I thought was an interesting move, going political for the first one, but clearly a lot of viewers interested to see that. Yeah, sticking with what he knows. With Clooney, Colbert joked back and forth about him being the arm candy of his relationship with wife, uh, help Amal. Me with Amal Clooney. Okay, excuse me. You gotta me. get but up on your celebrity I news. I sure do. Next. But the real threat of the night was the joking banner between him and Bush, who actually kept up along, or kept up well and played along well with uh, Colbert. Her mom said maybe we shouldn't have another Bush or another Clinton. Oh, she was in the just White joking. House. She was. <laughs> did you call her up and say, Mom, you're embarrassing me? Yeah, I did. Please drop totally. me off a, a block from the White House. I'll walk from here. <laughs> Colbert also got a video message. This was probably my favorite yeah, part. Yeah, this is my favorite part, too. From fellow late night host Jimmy Fallon, who's also pretty new to the game. Jimmy wished him luck and jokes. See you in the locker room. Yeah, good and stuff. The, yeah, it was good. The premiere also featured a small cameo by former Comedy Central colleague Jon Stewart. So, oh, good I missed that yeah. part. I, I did, I'll admit I didn't actually watch it, but no. I am going to rewatch the whole thing. It sounds awesome. What people seemed to mostly mm. like was the Oreo bit about uh, Trump and Clooney that being on there. Good. Anytime Clooney's on TV, it's, if it's, Clooney's there, it's good people are going to tune in. Yeah. I do feel like he. I, I I know it's his first show, but I do feel like he took the time to separate himself from the Jimmies. You know, Jimmy Fallon kind of has that like bashful, making celebrities look silly thing going on. I feel like Jimmy Kimmel's just kind of classic, funny, good jokes. Stephen Colbert, he was different, He's of course, from the flavor. Colbert Report, but uh, it, it was a little bit of the same thing. Yeah. Okay, another story here. Believe it or not, there was once a time when Americans would get their daily dose of caffeine from a small cup of coffee or tea, and that would be just about it for the day. I am happy to say that that's me. <laughs> that's, Still. Well, that's so, good. Yeah, we'll see what that happens in a couple me. years. Yeah. Today, caffeine is an obsession among Americans, and in recent years, there's been a spike in caffeine overdoses, so it is actually terrible news. Today, you can get your caffeine in a variety of ways from an energy drink, mm -hmm. stay awake pills, certain types of gum. Some people even buy caffeine in powdered form to mix into their food, and a single teaspoon of this caffeine powder can be packed with as much as 28 cups of caffeine, or of coffee's worth of caffeine. That just doesn't sound like any fun. I love my cup of coffee. I love my Diet Coke. But now, since there are more ways to consume even greater amounts of caffeine when you don't even have to taste it, apparently, thousands are suffering from overdoses and reports of addiction or withdrawal. The FDA has even become more aggressive in their warnings to consumers about the risks of caffeine. That's yeah, and of course, caffeine is fine in moderation, but excessive amounts can actually be deadly. Hospitals have reported more and more caffeine overdoses every single year. I did not know this. Back in 2013, caffeine withdrawal became an official mental health disorder. I guess like any other addiction, there are now even special clinics for the treatment of caffeine withdrawal symptoms, which use techniques similar uh, to those for drugs, which which I guess makes sense. We have known that caffeine is a drug. It's a stimulant. It's, it's a, a minor. Stimulant. Yeah. It's there. Uh, you know, and it just because it comes in your innocuous KBTX mug, yeah. I guess doesn't mean it's not dangerous. Right. But what is moderation? Like I, I have two cups of coffee a day. I have my morning cup, my afternoon cup. I, Am I at risk? I need. I feel like I need the afternoon you cup need the more, afternoon than, cup. more than anything, especially today. Man, goodness. I'm glad I had one for today at the very <laughs> <Yeah>. least. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Good stuff. We, we won't check you into a clinic just Thank you. yet. But serious business, of course. Hey, Hillary Clinton 
now, and I'm going to say finally, apologizing for using a private email server during her time as Secretary of State for the Obama administration. During an emotional interview on World News Tonight with David, see, I, I don't know this Muir. last name, Muir, <laughs> Clinton <you> <laughs> acknowledged that she should have used separate accounts for work and personal business. She also said, quote, I take responsibility and I am trying to be as transparent as I possibly can. Uh, sure, 2020 hindsight. Clinton also took to Facebook last night saying, I wanted you to hear this directly from me. Yes, I should have used two email addresses, one for personal and one for work at the State Department. Not doing so was a mistake. I'm sorry about it, and I take full responsibility. I do think it's interesting. I think it's commendable that even this late in the game, she is standing up and saying sorry and admitting the mistake instead of denying that she did anything wrong. I think it was finally time for her to just quit with that story and move on to a Yeah, we'll see how the swing voters re respond to that. Yeah. Clinton also stated that she is grateful for all of her support during this controversy and that she's not taking anything for granted. Sure. I guess I guess you can't with Biden and Bernie in the race. You can't take any of it for granted. Day two of testimony in the capital murder trial of Gabriel Hall is getting ready to wrap up. You might remember Hall is accused of shooting and killing Edwin Shar, a former A&M professor, inside of his college station home in 2011. You see him right there. His wife, Linda, right next to him, was also attacked, but she survived. News 3's Rusty Surrett has a recap of today's events. Rusty? An emotional start to day number two of testimony here at the Brazos County Courthouse. It started this morning with a former jail supervisor who tried to take Gabriel Hall's fingerprints as he was being questioned by detectives. He told the court that Gabriel Hall used superglue to try and cover up his fingerprints and his hands, and then he blamed it on a skin condition. We also heard from Nancy Kadurka. She was the caretaker for Edwin and Linda Shar when the attacks happened. Nancy began to cry on stand as she talked about the couple she once cared for. Nancy he said earlier in the day that she and Linda went to Walmart to get a pumpkin loaf for Edwin because Edwin's birthday was the following day and as we all know by now Edwin did not make it to see his birthday on that Friday in October 2011. Coming up today at 5 you're going to see some of the uh, transcripts from the actual confession that was on tape at the police department from Gabriel Hall. We'll tell you what Gabriel Hall said when officers asked him why did you do it, and why specifically did you choose their house? Again, we'll have that coming up at 5, and then another report at 6. Reporting in downtown Bryant, Rusty Threat News 3. Thanks, Rusty. Rusty has been there all day, and the plan is that he will be until this trial closes up. So those reports will be with you right here on News 3. Hey, we've got house call right after the break. We are talking about diabetes and the growing number of cases. You don't want to miss it. Tune in.